Here we are with the Java Stout. It is time to bottle. But before we get going, I thought it would be a good time to take our hydrometer reading and also a little, you know me, I like to do a little taste test. So, let's give it a go here. Oops, set this aside here. Actually, I'll just sit over here. Already sanitized the thief. Just go in and get a little sample here. Color looks good. Actually, no, we'll add just a dash more to that. It's a little bit easier to um, to take the reading I found if it's at least about half full. Finish dripping there. Okay, set that above the sink. Just pop this in. Just make sure no dust gets in here. And we will take our hydrometer. Give it a spin, and in it goes. Okay, so we're sitting at about 1.016. Yeah, 1.016. So we started out at 1.042. Um, it's a little high on the final gravity there. Uh, it doesn't look like it's doing any more fermenting. There hasn't been any bubbles for several days, so um, I guess that's what, we're, what we got. So let's just give it a quick little test here. I'm really not too worried about the um, how high the alcohol content goes or how much you know it's um, completed its thing. As, as long as my bottles don't explode, <laughs> that's the big thing for me. I don't want to have to clean that up. So as long as I can avoid um, cleaning up some glass and, and beer and oh, that would just be a mess. So I think we're going to be good on that note. So here we are, the Java Stout. You can definitely smell the coffee right off the bat. Holy crap. Super dark. Yeah, to be honest, you can't even smell like any beer or any hops or anything like that. I just I get this overwhelming rush of coffee. So here we go. Okay, so it's not finished, you know, it hasn't got any carbonation, it hasn't done its bottle conditioning. This is so smooth and it's so good. If you like the dark beers, um, and I'm assuming if you like dark beers, chances are you probably like coffee, or at least flavor. Um, this is just a great, great blend of the two. I'm surprised at how smooth it is. It's absolutely smooth. doesn't really have... Um, too bitter of a taste, actually. It's 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 um, it's very very balanced. Uh, the coffee um, the coffee taste is most definitely there. It's um, def you can definitely taste the coffee, but you also get a very very strong sort of underlying stout flavor. So this is going to be awesome in about in a, in a week or two. So I'm not sure how long this one's going to last before I crack them open. So. Um, so, we've already got the bottling bucket here with uh, the iota 4 in it. We've got everything else here in the trough getting sanitized as well. I'm going to go ahead and spray out the bottles and get them sanitized, and we are going to be ready to do this thing. So, we'll see you in just a second. Oh, man. Before we go ahead and rinse out the bottles with the sulfiter, we got to get our priming sugar solution here going. So, let's we'll get that cooking. We'll bring it up to a boil and we'll put in our five ounces of, um, or three quarters cups about, of uh, corn sugar for to, to make our priming solution. Okay, we're up to a boil here. So now what we're going to do, I'm going to turn the heat down just a tad. We're going to go ahead and mix in the corn sugar. It dissolves really quick so you don't have to worry about, um, see, it's already gone. Back up. 
get it back to a boil. We're going to boil this for a couple minutes here to get it all nice and sterilized. And then I'm going to put the lid back on it so that way it can cool down um, without becoming infected with anything. So. And also, while this uh, cools, that's usually when I go ahead and rinse out my bottles with Iota for to get them sanitized. So, just a little note in how I do it. You don't have to do it that way. Whatever, whatever process you come up with, that is uh, the best way to do it. So, we're going to get to sanitizing. Okay, so we've got everything sanitized, and now we're ready to get the beer into the bottling bucket. Uh, first step, make sure that your spigot is closed. Man, I can't stress that enough. Just in case, you know, something were to happen, that would make a mess. <laughs> so we don't need that anymore. I've already sanitized all of this, the auto siphon and the siphon tubing. So now it's just a matter of getting it going. Set that in there. Give it a couple pumps. And away it goes. We'll just lower that in there. I try not to lower it down too quick so I don't want the you know yeast at the bottom to explode. So that usually just lightly setting it down. There's a tip on the end of the auto siphon that keeps it from sucking right off the bottom. It'll pull from you know about half an inch above. So usually you can get right above the true. Um, and while that's doing that, I'll go ahead and sneak over here and grab our uh, priming sugar solution here. And uh, I usually wait for it to get going here in a circle. You can see it go in there. I'll wait just a second, not too long. Here. I'll just add it right in. And now we just wait for it all to siphon down.